Proud to serve Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania. This is WNEP 16, the news station. Now, Nolan Johannes, Karen Hart, Chief Meteorologist Tom Clark with his backyard forecast, and Joe Zone on sports. This is the News Watch 16 update. Good evening. This cold weather we're having is hard on just about all of us. But imagine what it would be like if you had nowhere to stay tonight. Sub-zero temperatures are making life extremely difficult for the homeless again tonight. Night Beat reporter Dan Fiorucci is standing by live now in Wilkes-Barre, where a special shelter has been set up just for the homeless. Dan? And Karen, odds are that this shelter is going to be needed because word is that on this bitter cold night, most of the shelters that usually house the homeless are filling up or some are even filled to capacity, leaving uh, uh, a need for perhaps some room. And so makeshift shelters like this one at United Central Methodist Church here in Wilkes-Barre are uh, opening up their doors. The problem is, of course, uh, how do you get word to people, the homeless who don't have TVs or radios, how do you get word to them about shelters like this? Is there any way for me to describe how it is on the streets? Mm -hmm. I, I don't really don't know how to answer that. Uh, I, I know if I didn't get here tonight, I would never have survived it. William Brown, a homeless man in the Wilkes-Barre area, found out about the shelter at the Central United Methodist Church by making a phone call. But he was apparently one of the few. Early tonight, only one bed out of a dozen or so available here was occupied. We have opened up our facility tonight. That is why Pastor Ken Carter is trying to get out the word to homeless people tonight. If they need a warm place to stay, he has a little room for them. Yes, your big problem is getting that message to those who would benefit most from it. Yes, it is, because if somebody is struggling to, uh, you know, worry about uh, whether they're going to be able to throw out their pipes or how they're going to be able to afford more oil when they don't have any money, uh, they're probably not going to be watching television. So we'd appreciate it if neighbors or other concerned citizens could let them know that uh, there is housing, there's no cost, there's no charge or anything like that. Uh, but if we can help, we certainly will. Now, as we say, on this terribly cold night, there are volunteers trying to pick up the slack, trying to find, be sure that people, homeless people who need a place to stay, have a warm place. And so once again, if you're in the Wilkes-Barre area, the United Central, uh, uh, Central United Methodist Church here in Wilkes-Barre will take the homeless. If you have a neighbor who doesn't have heat or if you see homeless people on the street, be sure to call the police so that they can offer a place to stay for any homeless people on the street because temperatures like this could, uh, could kill people, obviously. Dan Fiorucci, Newswatch 16, reporting live from Wilkes-Barre. It's a record-breaking cold wave that's crippled northeastern and central Pennsylvania. Its icy grip took hold of many cars this morning as many car batteries rolled over and played dead. Forecasters, including our team of meteorologists, warn of life-threatening conditions, advising all of us not to go outside unless we absolutely have to. But in some cases, being inside is not enough to fight the freeze. Case in point, a new stand in downtown Wilkes-Barre. What with the door opening and closing constantly, old man Winter's frigid breath has this woman wearing gloves at least to keep her hands warm. Newswatch 16 has team coverage of the bitter cold and what we can all do about it. First, the dangers. Then meteorologist Tom Clark will tell us how long we'll be in this deep freeze and will tell you what you can do to keep your home's heating system working properly. The cold we had over the weekend claimed a life from hypothermia. That's when the cold robs the body of its warmth. 79-year-old Edward DeWalt died in his home in Danville in Montour County sometime Saturday morning. DeWalt's home was heated by an old-fashioned kerosene heater, which was not effective because the temperature inside when they found him was 40 the degrees. The uh, needed some repairs done. There was windows, that uh, one window in particular that I saw that needed repair. It had nothing over it. The air was blowing through that window freely. Uh, the one door had no latches on it. Uh, when the air blowed, the door would move. DeWalt was found by his sons, who were temporarily moved from the home. Hypothermia, known as the quiet killer, and frostbite are two dangers everyone faces in this cold weather, as we see in this Health Watch report. Newswatch 16's Kathy Bellich is live at the Scranton Communi Community Medical Center, and Kathy's going to tell us how we can all try to protect ourselves. Right, Kathy? 
That's right, Karen. Karen, hypothermia is when the body gets so cold that no oxygen gets to the brain and the body eventually shuts down. Hypothermia creeps up on a person very slowly. The first signs are usually confusion and drowsiness. If you know someone who's getting unusually confused or drowsy at odd times, you should get them to a hospital. Frostbite can happen very quickly in weather like this with whipping winds as quickly as five to ten minutes. It usually hits the extremities first, nose, ears, hands, and feet. You can tell if you have frostbite by looking. Frostbitten skin will look frozen. That's because it is. Dr. Frank Schell here at CMC says you can also tell by the way you feel. The danger times when it starts to hurt and you know that you're in trouble when the sensation starts to go away if you're still exposed. Your feet or your hands should be real warm in water that is approximately body temperature, so anywhere between 90 and 100 degrees. Dr. Shell says if the water is any hotter, it can cause even more damage. He says most of the time your nose will thaw out just by breathing in warm air. So told me today that if a frostbite victim thaws the skin and it still looks different or damaged, it should be checked by a doctor at once. And once you're a frostbite victim, that same area is much more susceptible to becoming frostbitten again. Kathy Bellich, Newswatch 16, live with the Instacam at Scranton CMC. Some good advice. Thank you, Kathy. Well, our chief meteorologist, Tom Clark, is live now in his weather office. Tom, why is it so cold? Karen, uh once again, the jet stream uh, took a major change over the weekend, giving us today the coldest day so far this century, as far as how cold the wind made it feel. And at about 7 o'clock this morning, that was 60 below zero. When it gets that cold, flesh can freeze within 60 seconds. That's why it's so very dangerous uh, being outside today. Now, on my new computer graphic, I've computer here. Uh, that is how the upper air jet stream wind is now looking. Now there's the motion there. Counterclockwise flow around a very intensely cold air mass over southeastern Canada. And when it gets like that, it's very slow to change. You can see the flow coming right out of the Arctic across eastern Pennsylvania and uh, the eastern U.S. for that matter. Temperatures in a single numbers in northern Florida. The worst of it is now moving through. A slow uh, improving trend over the next couple of days as far as temperature is concerned, a very slow thaw. And I'll have more on that a little bit later on. Karen? Thank you, Tom. The icy cold weather contributed to a power outage in Jefferson Township in Lackawanna County. 190 customers were without electricity because some ice knocked down a wire. Power was restored in just a few hours. Today was a record-breaking day for the utilities, providing energy to keep our homes warm. Pennsylvania Power and Light Company, the largest producer of electricity here in northeastern Pennsylvania, produced a record peak of almost 5.5 million kilowatt hours. A lot of the energy came from the Susquehanna nuclear plant near Berwick that you can see here from Skycam 16. Both reactors were working near capacity. UGI also reports a record-breaking day, while PG&W says it is close to meeting a record for natural gas and expects to break it overnight tonight. With a big demand on our heating systems in our homes, contractors have been busy answering calls today. News 116's Bob Reynolds met up with one of those people who has some advice. Furnaces work overtime trying to keep homes and businesses warm. The cold wind is keeping temperatures down, and at times, it's just too much. Well, I came downstairs in the middle of the night, and I noticed it was quite cold downstairs here, so I went over to the thermostat and I looked at it, and the house was only 58 degrees, but I had it set at 72. And I knew there was a problem somewhere. Here's the culprit, a pump which was overworked to a point where it overheated. It only takes a few minutes to replace the bad part, and this Kingston family is toasty warm again. But for homes not properly insulated, the problem can mean money out the window. It's just leaking out of the house faster than the furnace can produce the heat, so you just kind of have to let the furnace work and catch up and maybe do some caulking around some windows or make sure the outside entrance is closed and uh, hope the furnace will catch up and make the house 70 degrees. So while there are things you can do to make your house warmer, the plumbing contractor we talked to warned that it's not a good idea for you to go down into your basement and begin playing around with your furnace if you suspect trouble. Call an expert, because as he puts it, you could literally be playing with fire. Bob Reynolds, Newswatch 16, Luzerne County. Many of you may have some questions about the cold weather and how to cope with it. That's why tonight at 7, we'll present Fighting the Freeze, a Newswatch 16 special report. We'll have a panel of experts on hand to talk about the deep freeze. 
including meteorologist Tom Clark, Kingston Fire Chief Dave Long, Dr. Jill Hunt of CMC Hospital, and Pete Polanski, a Luzerne County mechanic. If you have questions about the weather, you can call now. We'll open our phone lines and keep them open until 7.30. The number is to call to ask a question to our panel, 1-800-982-4374. That's toll-free in our viewing area, 346-7474 in Scranton, and 826-1616 in Wilkes-Barre. Call your questions in now, and at 7, join Frank Andrews for Fighting the Freeze, a Newswatch 16 special report live here on WNEP-TV. There is much more news today, like our freezing presidential inauguration, and we'll have that via satellite as Newswatch 16 continues. Well, if you do have to get out and drive in this cold weather, the experts say you should take some extra precautions. As Newswatch 16's Kathy Bellich reports, being left out in the cold could put your life in danger. I, too, was one of those lucky people who heard this this morning. Nothing. Luckily, I was close to home, but if this ever happens to you when you're not close to home or close to anything else, there are some things you can keep in your car that can protect you from the cold. Craig Smith at Scranton's AAA Motor Club office says taking some simple precautions during old man winter's fury could save your life. Never go into the winter without a few blankets. Uh, the wool type, too, are excellent. The Army or Air Force woolen blankets are excellent. Besides wool blankets, AAA suggests a thick candle and matches for warmth, but be careful not to burn yourself and always crack a window for oxygen. Uh, a plastic bag is also very good because if you, a large one, you can trap the body heat around the bodies inside the car. And just in case you're stuck in a snowbank, clear out the snow around the exhaust system and then be seen. Make sure you're seen so the motors don't hit you. You never know when this will happen to you, but AAA says by being prepared, you can survive it without suffering too much damage to your health. Kathy Bellage, Newswatch 16, Scranton. Coming up, looking for the cause of some fires in our area and a plane crash in Nevada. Plus, a little later, we'll have a live satellite report from the inaugural celebrations in Washington, all as Newswatch 16 Update continues. Tanglewood, the most fabulous vacation resort in the Poconos, has arrived. We've spent millions making Tanglewood the new standard in year-round vacation fun. And now we'd like to extend a very special invitation to you. Spend the day enjoying all that Tanglewood has to offer on us. By calling this number, 1-800-228-5100, you'll find out how you can be eligible to spend a full day of wintertime fun at Tanglewood, absolutely free of any charge. Skiing, skiing equipment, skiing instruction, chairlifts, snowmobiling, ice skating, and cross-country skiing. All this and much more completely free of charge. For a family of four, it's over a hundred dollar value. And by calling this number now and making your reservation, we'd like to treat you and your family to a complimentary lunch at Tanglewood in the Poconos. This is a limited offer with no obligation, and it's by phone reservation only. So call 1-800-228-5100. That's 1-800-228-5100. Call now. The cold weather may have forced President Reagan to move his inauguration inside today, but tonight they're having a hot time in our nation's capital. It's been a night of inaugural balls, celebrating the beginning of President Reagan's second term. The president's public swearing-in ceremony was held inside the Capitol building today because it was just too cold outside. Mr. Reagan talked about a different kind of freeze as part of his inaugural address. I will shortly submit a budget to the Congress aimed at freezing government program spending for the next year. Beyond this, we must take further steps to permanently control government's power to tax and spend. The president also defended his plan for a Star Wars defense system in outer space and promised to work for peace among all nations. Newswatch 16's Bob Costantini and Mark Davis are standing by live via satellite right now in the Capitol building where those ceremonies took place today. Gentlemen, what's it like there now? Well, Karen, right now it's cold outside, but pretty nice here inside. You can't help but feel a sense of history in this building, not only because of the sense of history that was made here today with Ronald Reagan taking the oath, but just the history in general. Despite the cancellations, the postponements, and all the changes, there is nothing like Washington on Inauguration Day. Bob? That's for sure, Mark. 
The Capitol Rotunda here could only hold about a thousand people for today's swearing in. So that makes tonight's inaugural balls even more important for thousands of Ronald Reagan supporters who wanted to see their man in the flesh. They weren't disappointed by the indoor events. First stop on the president's rounds, the D.C. Armory, where the high school students from Schuylkill and Northumberland counties, we told you about at 6 o'clock, were partying. Mr. and Mrs. Reagan received thunderous applause from the crowd at the youth inaugural ball. They only stayed each a few minutes, but each stop tonight, the president and first lady danced for the crowd, this time at the Washington Convention Center. Deficits, Star Wars, Central America, and many other problems aside, the Reagans certainly seemed to enjoy themselves tonight, celebrating their second inauguration, anticipating four more years leading the country. And in his inaugural speech today, Ronald Wilson Reagan said America is, once again, a rising nation, vibrant, robust, and alive. Well, Bob, this, turn, this town was certainly alive tonight with no less than nine different inaugural balls all over town, the president trying to stop at most of them. And we had a little time earlier to stop in at one of the many inaugural balls. The Pennsylvania inaugural ball was held with the Texas celebration in the Kennedy Center. For the people from our area and thousands of others, this is the big chance to show off your finest. The inaugural balls are held with all of the hoopla of a Hollywood premiere. Well, it's been a great time down here, Mark, and it's been a great honor to pay homage to a man who I feel has really turned this country around. It's probably the most important event, I believe, in anybody's life. We are fortunate for uh, this to be our second. Next time around, we're for Jack Camp. We may not be so lucky. <laughs> I just love D.C. I think it's exciting and thrilling, especially since Reagan is in. This is what we all been working for. This is a grand finale, the cherry on top of the Sunday. And when Inauguration Day 1985 is put in the history books, it'll be the most expensive, it'll be the coldest, and it'll be the first one held right here in the Capitol Rotunda. But you know something? Despite the cancellations and all the problems, it'll be something that all of us who are here in Washington to witness it, it'll be something we never forget. For Bob Constantini, I'm Mark Davis, News 16, live via satellite from the rotunda of the Capitol in Washington, D.C. Karen, back to you. Very good job, and have a safe trip home. We certainly will. Now we're going to switch picture, pictures just like that, live in the backyard, Tom. I see you're dancing around, trying to stay a little warm out there. That's right. You've got to keep the muscles in motion, Karen. Uh, very cold out here again tonight, but I am happy to say that tomorrow it's going to be about 15 degrees warmer than what it was today. So that's some good news from the weather department. Let's check the number now in the backyard. It is mighty frigid, to say the least. You know that. One above now, 62% humidity. The wind west at 15 gives me a wind chill factor out here of about uh, 30 below zero. Barometer is falling now. High temperature this day, only two. But look at the record. A new record, 14 below zero, just before 7 o'clock this morning. And that broke the old record of 11 below, set just one year ago. And our photographer, Doug Engel, got us a shot of some uh, frost, a frosty design on the window pane here in the Newswatch 16 newsroom. Ah, but yes, it's nice to have a fire. Ah, ah, yeah. ah, Ooh. Mm, man, that feels good out here tonight. And I want to thank our photographer, uh, uh, Tim Keegan, for giving me a video fireplace in the backyard tonight. <sighs> That's nice. Satellite view is coming up next, and it shows the effects of all that cold air coming down off the East Coast over the warm waters of the Atlantic. A lot of clouds out that way. More than 100 cities shattered record temperatures this morning. About 20 of them set all-time all-time record low temperatures. It's never before been that cold since records began back in the uh, turn of the century. Most of those cities down to the south, more records will be broken again tonight down that way, but not so much up here. We will not break the record here. Up to 27 inches of lake effect snow in parts of southern Michigan. You can see the lake effect uh, clouds, the snow squalls there. Just some very light flurries now falling over most of Pennsylvania. You can see the clouds, but tonight warmer air is coming down out of Canada, and that's going to give us a bit of a change for tomorrow. Here it is for tomorrow. Just a little bit of relief, okay? A few clouds and some sunshine, maybe a few snow flurries in the morning. Temperature-wise tomorrow, 
Not all that bad. Hey, look at that. 21 in Jersey Shore, 23 Shamokin, Stroudsburg in the low 20s, 18 Old Forge, a west wind at 25. It'll still give us 30 below wind chill factors. Sunrise and sunset times look like this for tomorrow, 724 and 507. Now, flurries tonight, two below here in Avoca, uh, 10 to 12 below in the outlying areas, 18 tomorrow, windy, some sunshine on Wednesday, upper 20s to near 30 later in the week. Karen, you didn't know I had a fireplace in the backyard, did you? <laughs> Go home to the real thing now, Tom. That's good. Thanks okay. a lot. Coming up, the new Super 16 high school basketball poll, plus the courting of a Heisman quarterback. Joe Zone and the 16 sports screen next. Furniture presents a store-wide winter clearance sale. Save now on Penn's entire inventory. From one-of-a-kind hand-picked Chinese rugs and oriental pieces to the ultimate furniture names like Drexel Heritage, Henriton, Century, Baker, and more. You'll see this beautiful Chatham Oaks dining room. And our exquisite 18th century collections of dining rooms, bedrooms, or occasional pieces. Don't miss the savings during Penn Furniture's store-wide winter clearance sale in downtown Scranton. All the partying is not going on in Washington tonight. There is some out in San Francisco if land. If you are a 49er fan, it's fun time. And uh, the screen will show you. You have a right to be happy. Happy there were today. Big victory parade. Celebration through downtown and along the streets of San Francisco. Thousands turned out to cheer the best team in football. No doubt about it. All right, Doug Flutie, let's check out his story, if we may. The NFL may be dreaming if it thinks Heisman Trophy quarterback Flutie won't go to the USFL. The Boston College quarterback had a little get-together today with the owner of the USFL, uh, Ger Generals, New Jersey Generals, Donald Trump. Trump is supposedly offering a four-year, $9 million deal. The NFL uh, is just sitting around. To push you towards the Generals, and that's, you know, things just keep, uh, little points that keep coming up that just seem very positive in that direction. Um, you know, the, the money is a factor also. It, it's definitely a factor, but it's not the primary factor. And that's what's important to me is, is look at the total picture. That's five million, and the Buffalo Bills with the worst record in the NFL have the number one choice in their opening draft. I think someone right now ought to get, get Flutie a call. All righty. They started out like gangbusters, then they struggled. Wilkes College back at it tonight with Elizabethtown. There are the Wilkes cheerleaders in action, and we'll pick up the action early. Wilkes give and go, number 40. Scott Jacoby scores underneath. Elizabethtown now scores on this nice pass. Nate Weber puts it in. Wilkes Ken Yakabitis high score tonight with 23 points, drives the layup in and off the glass. Elizabeth Town takes the lead again. Here comes a jumper by Jeff Knoll from the corner right there. That's good. Now watch Mark Graves, the little guy in white, coming at you. Gets the steal, picks it up. He's going to go underneath, get fouled, hammered, roll. Where'd that ball come from? But here's where it ends up in the hoop. Unfortunately, tonight for Wilkes, big win for Elizabeth Town. They win it by seven. Okay, the college scoreboard, all the scoreboards are down tonight because of all the school cancellations. So rather than just read these, I think I'll give you the scores and maybe dance a little bit. So, Wilkes beat Elizabeth, Elizabethtown over Wilkes final was 76 to 69. Uni can I have some music, please? University of Scranton, 81, Drew, 73. Big win for the U. Bloomsburg over Maryland. Baltimore campus tonight, 84 to 67. Bucknell, no music when you need it, no scoreboard. Bucknell beat York, 65-51. Alverni over College Misericordia, 83-63 now. Women's basketball, Elizabethtown, 89, Wilkes, 68. Susquehanna, 74, Kings, 46 in women's basketball. We do have fish. I'll get to that later. More basketball, North Carolina over Jacksonville, 74-68. Number 10, DePaul beat East Washington. And number 15, Boston College over Pittsburgh. Make that Pittsburgh over Boston College, 61 to 55. Boy, some nights, everything's frozen. Okay, high school basketball, Northern Tier, Athens loses to Northeast Bradford, Centennial League, Pocono Mountain beat Pleasant Valley. Everything postponed in the NAC. Girls basketball, the winners, Carbondale, West Scranton, and Marion. Now, how about the new Super 16? We don't have that up either. But I'll tell you, the Potville's number one, Lord's Regional is number two, Northern Lehigh is number three, Allentown Central Catholic is number four. Boy, no wonder radio is so boring. Allentown Island is number five, Whitehall is number six, Montoursville number seven, GAR number eight, Nanakoke number nine, Bishop Newman number 10, Hazleton is number 11, 
Northeast, Northeast Bradford is number 12. Galeton is number 13. Bishop Hoban is number 14. South Williamsport is number 15. And Honesdale is number 16. That music sounds good. High school wrestling scoreboard, folks. Pleasant Valley beat Lee Heighton. Make that Lee Heighton over Pleasant Valley, 39 to 18. And now in the National Hockey League, the live shots were a lot easier from 3,000 miles away. Boston 3, Montreal 1, St. Louis 6, Detroit 3, Winnipeg 6, Pittsburgh 5, that's in the third, Chicago 6, Minnesota 2, that's in the third, Los Angeles 4, Edmonton nothing, that's in the second, and Calgary and Vancouver, there's no score in the first. That's all the scores. Let's take a look at what the fish are doing tomorrow, okay? I said, they told me I had that. I thought they'd all be frozen, but they're still swimming around down there. Good job, despite uh, not having your modern technology well, you gotta there. you got to make Joe. some choices. The school closing certainly were more important. important than the high school scores. Okay, thanks, Joe. Still ahead for the skiers. If it's not one thing, it's another. But first, here's tonight's winning lottery number. The daily number is 411. We'll be right back. Finally tonight, skiers love cold weather, but now even the skiers think that old man winter has gone a bit too far. Ski resorts in our area tell us the sub-zero temperatures are keeping the skiers away from the slopes. Here at the Montage Ski Resort in Scranton, the hills were practically deserted. But the resorts say there are some hardy souls who did turn out to head down the slopes today, like here at Camelback in Monroe County. And that's Newswatch 16 update for tonight. Keep warm and good night. <laughs>